All right, Vito here with more beer. We're at the Omega booth at HumbroCon. Wanted to stop by, say hi. I love the stuff you guys are doing, the thialized yeast, the star party, the cosmic punch, all that kind of stuff. So let's talk a little bit about thialized yeast, any tips you have for homebrewers out there that are using it, um, and then anything cool that you might be able to share uh, that's coming out that you're stoked on. Yeah, so um, thiols, we've been pushing it for more a little over a year. Uh, we're really excited about it. We're still really excited about it. It's essentially what I've been working on for this entire past year. Uh, and the cool thing is it, uh, you know, it gives us access to a compound that's always been in our raw materials, like uh, mash hopping with Cosmic Punch really provides an extra boost of 3SH, which essentially translates into like your passion fruit, your guava, your, um, you know, your grapefruits. Uh, but like the real star is your, your malt. We find that just like base malts, low kiln malts, all, like all your barleys, ton of precursor, you're just going to get a ton of it uh, based off of that alone. Uh, so as far as, you know, putting together a recipe, my biggest recommendation is treating the thiol as a flavor component, an aroma component, rather than like the end all be all. Um, really start to balance your, uh, your barley with your adjunct, which, you know, uh, white wheat, not a ton of precursor, flaked wheat, flaked oats, flaked rice, not a ton of precursors in that and really find the hops that work really well with it. Like we're finding a lot of citrus for its hop, tropical for its hops, like really blend well with uh, your thiols. Some of those different hops have different amounts of those precursors in there, right? So there's, yeah. is there any specific hop that you, or, or a couple hops that you would recommend? Um, you know, the Strata, you know, the Idaho 7, et cetera. Yeah, so as far as like mash hopping, accessing those precursors for that, like Cascade we're finding has a ton of them. A lot of Noble hops on a lot of them. We did a lot of testing with like Tet, um, like Hallertau, um, Citra has a ton also, but obviously if you're using these precursors just for precursors, use your cheaper hop. Sots also has a lot of them. Um, but as far as accessing precursors, I recommend going with like your cheaper hops, cascades and everything. Cause that's what you're really looking for. The precursor amounts. That's an awesome tip. Yeah. I love that. Uh, use these, these ones that are higher in the precursors and the mash hop to, to create that. And then in the whirlpool, then go with the fruitier hops and things like that to really double down on that aroma. Definitely. Definitely. Um, the other thing is, uh, you're accessing about 30% utilization of the hops when you are mash or when you mash hops. So that's something to also keep in mind when you're calculating your bitterness. And one thing I want to go into, because this was kind of like counterintuitive to me, and I remember talking about it, is like, you know, with mash hops, you're like, well, you're boiling them, they're getting uh, summarized, but those precursors actually live through the boil. Is that correct? Yeah, they're completely stable through the boil. They're going to be there at the end of your brew during the fermentation when, you know, you're cleaving the bonds with our thialized yeast strains. Yeah, so that was pretty interesting to me. All right, last one for you. Uh, if you can share, is there any new things that we should be on the look for, uh, look out for as homebrewers? Yeah, so we've actually um, talked about this already at CBC over at, uh, I gave a talk about it in Sacramento. Uh, we were releasing a strain that uh, releases ALDC uh, intracellularly. So uh, rather than having to do an enzyme addition, you can just pitch this yeast uh, and it'll eliminate diacetyls. Oh, the diacetyl is still getting Produce produced. It. It's just getting yeah. it's just getting bypassed to uh, a imperceptible level, so you don't have to worry about like uh, diacetyl production during dry hop creep, uh, diacetyl with production with like di high diacetyl producing tra strains like the Chico strain or the Fuller strain. Like uh, that's something we're really excited about and should be coming out actually pretty soon. That's awesome. Yeah, ALDC was like a game changer for myself and I think a lot of others. So that's really cool. Is that a genetically modified? I assume then it is a genetically modified strain. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, that's uh, that's great. You guys are doing some amazing work with that. Uh, love it. Thanks for taking time. Um, keep up the great work. Awesome. Thanks for talking, guys. Cheers. Cheers.